you know, that's so, so true. Hi-fi shouldn't be some sort of overly geeky technical exercise in spite of music at because Monitor Audio's tagline is making audio human. Anyway, to this review. Some people think that speakers around this price are inferior, judging by some elitist comments on forums. But often speakers at this money are like a man's best friend. They're not to be sniffed at. So this gold series fits in the range one down from platinum two and above more budget silver and then bronze offerings. The Gold 100s are two-way bookshelf speakers with a 6.5-inch base mid-range driver with what Monitor Audio call a C-cam front skin or ceramic coated aluminium and magnesium. You'll notice it has a tessellated hexagon pattern on its surface. Inside this, the driver has a honeycomb Nomex core. And then finally, on the inside, you've got a woven glass fibre layer. The front silver surface is actually pressed onto the Nomex to adopt its pattern and show off the fact that Nomex is used. Obviously, the mid-base cone has to be a toss-up between lightness and stiffness, so it's not bending and distorting, but moving in a true forward and back pistonic motion with less movement as possible to avoid distortion. This monitor audio doesn't use a normal true flat ribbon tweeter as illustrated nicely in this school physics video I found on YouTube. What happens is an alternating current is passed through a thin metal strip sitting between a magnetic field and then frequency is changed to create sound. But what monitor audio use is what's called an AMT tweeter which is a generic technology standing for air motion transformer, which is basically a development of the flat ribbon tweeter, but with pleats or folds in the ribbon. The point being, the more surface area means less need for movement, means less distortion. So Monitor Audio have actually taken the design a stage further and developed their own AMT tweeter called an MPD or micro pleated diaphragm. Sorry, I know more acronyms and bear with me with this for a bit. I'm actually told by their technical director, Michael Hedges, this particular AMT tweeter has smaller folds than other manufacturers designs. In other words, better or bigger surface area equals less distortion. That's, that's their ideal that they're going for. Apparently too, the ethos of monitor audio is not to spend loads at the price point on ancillaries which don't add to performance. Not unusual perhaps, but it does give monitor audio that image, I think, of, you know, you don't need to spend more. The Gold 100s cross over between drivers at 2.5 kilohertz and use a rear port with a straight rifling pattern to speed the bass air out of the cabinets. The idea being to create a faster transient and dynamic bass. Obviously, if you're using without bungs, look at the back and I love it because it's proper old school with dual binding posts, mainly for biamping, where you use separate amps for boosting performance and where conventional wisdom says you can do that. Also, you'll see cable links for when you use one set of speaker wire. Unusual as you know, most links are of the metal type, but obviously, hardly anyone ever buy wires nowadays so the likelihood of you taking these out are small but they're there to take out if you need to.
okay, I extended that a bit, but I can never tire of that piece of music. It's just a beautiful piece of music. Ratman and off. And by the way, we do classical music on this channel. Who bothers with magnetic grills nowadays? I'm sure monitor audio have to include for some taste, but who wouldn't want to show off all this finery? Personally, I prefer the speaker's finish on the top to this soft touch plastic cover. The piano black model that I have are lovely looking with the silver driver and rings, gray tweeter cover and black case. I think contrast is basically the aesthetic aim for good design. And these speakers really say, look at my contrast, look at me. So on build quality stakes, they are better built than my PMCs for under half the money. When you look at the widening gaps of where the drivers are secure to the cabinet, there's none of that with these monitor audios. The join is to micro tolerances between the silver rings and case. It's perfecta mundo in terms of build quality. Admittedly small fry and not in panel pantheons of a Yugo versus a Volkswagen Golf Mark 8. But when it's built to these levels and built in China, dispelling this Chinese made must mean poor quality, the PMCs are actually made in Luton, England. Using the Hagen H390, which is probably a maxing them out combo, and the first standout trait, they're definitely enthusiastic with base depth and quantity, which I actually saw said in another review. So they're gonna suit people who want that. Also, they do need space to work well, and perhaps to most tastes, you're gonna want to use them with the bungs to tighten up the base a bit, I think. But I actually thought at the price, the base is very dynamic and you could easily think it would be more bloaty at this type of money. Even at decent volumes, the cases are inert with vibration to pretty much diddly squat levels. This has to be a factor in why the bass is on and offy. And to boot, they do have an internal horizontal brace, so it's not just the square box that you see. I've got a track called Stromboli Promenade by the dining rooms on this old downbeat electronic chill out album I like called Subterranean Modern Volume 1 and it has a prominently raised bass line which really does show off this quality and quantity of bass that these gold 100s have which is why by the way I titled this video as Little Rockers. I'll put all the tracks I mention in this video with others from the same artist into a Tidal and Quo Buzz playlist and I'll put that in the description. Often people talk about speakers having a house sound. Now, obviously I'm not talking about what Carl Cox does to get his own signature out, but across ranges, this isn't sometimes true with speakers, but I'd say that this balance and detail thing with the Gold 100s is really impressive at the price and a standout trait, and certainly more impressive than the silver and bronze ranges they make, which I've heard visiting dealers and previously by owning an old bronze center speaker myself. There's nothing too smooth, there's nothing too edgy or brittle. And that's my main take home of these speakers really, second to bass prowess. So the tweeters aren't at all bright and composure in treble is really good. Without that harsh treble some ribbon tweeter speakers produce. Obviously this isn't a normal ribbon design as we've covered. It does tend to mean faster transient treble in these types of designs, and that's true here. An off-axis performance with treble is really good, something ribbon or ribbon type speakers get criticized for. They actually cope with all music, you know, as all rounders, and maybe a bit of Beausoir from Debussy, all the way up to Massive Attack's Hymn of the Big Wheel off the Blue Lines album, which to anyone who knows that track, 
it really shows off the strength of the syncopated beats. Go on Alexa, put yourself to some use. Music or a rhythm characterised by displaced beats or accents. The percussion and rhythm of Jose Padilla's Maybe the Sunset, which if you like all that tuney, housey, Café Del Mar music, like I do, you'll be playing that tune in your head all day long with these speakers. Check it out. Playing the track Duke of Earlsfield by Sabres of Paradise on the Haunted Dance Hall album, where all those percussive instruments create space and atmosphere with their reverb and treble speed, is really impressive with these speakers. Five hundred and forty quid more than the Kef LS fifty Metas, the Gold one hundreds have it over the Metas with a little bit more detail against the Kef's rolled off top treble, and with the Gold one hundreds outright bass depth and just guts in the mid range, which has a warm tonality and which is another standout trait or feature I'd say. Surprisingly, the Kefs are pretty close on bass and scale for size. Where the Kefs have it over the monitor audios, I think, is in their holographic approach to forward and back soundstage depth. No doubt the UniQ tech that Kef use. Obviously a lot will be due to preference, but as ever, a review is for a shortlist, so always get out and try yourself, and preferably try at home. Around the same price as Neat's IOTA Alpha speakers, but with these monitor audios, it's all about all out punch and weight as you'd expect for their, their driver size, particularly against the smaller size drivers of the Neats. But personally though, unless you've got a really small room, the Gold 100s give a bigger, thicker set and more tonally balanced sound, slightly cheaper too. They just feel a little bit more conventional hi-fi sounding in the sense of being an all rounder with these qualities and also the great mid-range to the Neats slightly forward approach, so possibly the Golds will have a wider appeal. That said though, the Neat IOTA Alphas are fantastic speakers, so it's very close to call. Against a pair of £800, $1,000 Definitive Technology Demand D11s, which have a more room-filling sound with the upward-firing radiators, these monitor audios are the more accurate and dynamic resolver and admittedly around double the money, it, it just makes them a better speaker, which perhaps isn't any revelation with the price hike. But I think the recommended retail price of the Demand D11s is normally £1,000, so a similar ballpark price and that's why I'm comparing them. But if it were me, I'd definitely save up 500 quid more and buy the Gold 100s over these Definitive Technologies because they're just the better speaker all day long. So, you know, what do you want? All out balance, detail and dynamic capability of these Brits, Limeys, Poms, what else do we get called? <laughs> um, that has to be more important, doesn't it, in a speaker to make it more 
musical, and that's an okay term, by the way, than this room fittingness and smoother, more smeared tone of this particular Yank offering. They don't actually go deep in detail and involvement like my PMCs do, nor to the level of bass dynamics as PMC, which are probably one of the class leaders at their price and type. I only mention though as a reference point and not to criticise or compare. We can't expect a speaker to be as good costing half the money, right? Annoyingly for me, the Monitor Audio cement thoughts of lower diminishing returns at this type of price and possibly this speaker's price and design is the sweet spot for audio. They come very recommended. Anyway, please like, subscribe and comment, push the bell and all that sort of stuff. And please tell me what you think of comparisons you've made with these speakers. Plus, I hope the music recommendations really hit a chord. Remember to check out new content as I put it up. And as always, thanks very much for watching. <laughs>